Hi y'all and welcome back to the messy garden. So my dad and my aunt were here over the past weekend and we got the uh, garden beds removed, the wood garden beds uh, that the earth boxes were in. And I also, uh, while they were there, kind of removed some of the bigger keyhole vegetable garden uh, because I have a metal bed coming in that's gonna be replacing that sometime in the next month. Um, so the garden is pretty much a mess. I've not been able to start any spring cleanup yet. Uh, this week the weather's been meh, but it's been cloudy. Uh, so it's not fun temperatures out here without the sun shining really beautifully like it is today. Now, because we've had a little bit of warmer weather, it's been in the 50s, the perennials are really starting to push some growth. And so now's the time where a lot of that growth is going to happen so those can start blooming middle of May and they may actually start earlier um, because I'm seeing a lot more growth this time of year in March which is almost April uh, than in typical years I think it may just be me it just seems really early um, the bulbs are also looking really great I'll take you around and show you a few of those I would like to do some uh, nice photos of those and I have taken some nice photos and I'll put some of those on the screen of what they look like the tulips in the metal raised bed that I planted in the fall are starting to burst. And I got the first planting done of the season, which were those Let's Dance Can Do hydrangeas around the Red Obelisk Beach up front. So I'll take you up there and show you those. And today we're going to be planting probably some of these Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvitae down here below me. And I'll show you just kind of how I lay out these things. I'm very meticulous uh, because spacing is something that I am pretty good at visualizing, just looking at something. And if something is not perfectly spaced, it will bother me for years to come. I have a boxwood out front in my front bed. They were some of the first things that I planted on this property. And one of them is slightly not as centered as the rest of them. And it drives me nuts every time I look at it. So let's go take a look at some beautiful things first. So look at this absolute mess here. Uh, so you can see I removed a lot of the vegetable garden here and then moved the soil into this bed, which I'll talk about on a separate video later. But all of these nice tulips that I had blooming are coming up really nicely. The purple ones are just started. I'm not sure what varieties these are. I had lots of them in the fall that I just got on sale and I just grabbed as many as I could that sounded really pretty. because they were super cheap, but lots of beautiful things. These are really short, and these are some of the, maybe the parrot tulips, I'm not real sure, but they have interesting coloring on them anyway. But I really love the yellows, and these whites are really, really nice too. So out of all the bulbs I planted, I think my favorite daffodil right now is this one i think it's called mammoth uh, i'm not exactly sure but that's what's coming to my mind the cups and the flowers themselves are massive so you see i've got the little tiny ones back there those came from the woodland blend from uh, color blends i think i got these from color blends too but if i didn't i picked them up at that bulb cell let me go grab a bloom from a just normal size daffodil and show you the size comparison so we've got all of these random patches of daffodils that I've just kind of stuck around. We'll go back here to the back and grab one that won't be as noticeable that's already bent over and I'll take you and show you what the difference is. Okay, here we go. So here is a regular sized daffodil on the right. And you can see how huge, I mean it's not terribly that much bigger, but it is quite striking in the landscape when you compare them with each other. And this is a big clump that I planted together. So all of those will be mammoth. And this is the Gypsy Queen hyacinths that I kind of staggered through here. We're just starting to get some blooms on those. Um, and they're looking really nice. Let me show you a little more further progressed one so you can see the color. This is the color right here. Beautiful corally uh, orange sherbet type color. 
Now, these are a little squatty. Um, I've never planted hyacinths before. My neighbor has some. I've seen them, of course. They seem a little squattier than they should be, but they're just starting to open. So maybe they'll continue to get a little larger. Not smelling anything standing here or uh, crouching here, but they're supposed to have a nice smell as well. One of my second favorites, just because of the pure beauty, uh, not necessarily the size like the mammoths, is this one called Ice Folly or Ice Follies. Um, it is just so striking from a distance because it has these large white petals and a yellow cup, so it really makes the cup stand out. And the cup is super, super frilly, as you can see there. Just really nice clumps I planted here. And then we have these yellow with orange cups that are kind of really striking too. I planted these kind of out of the way because I wasn't sure how I'd like them. I really like how they're looking uh, so far. We're getting some growth on some of the other perennials under here as well. And this nine bark is starting to push some growth. So we'll be getting blooms on that and some niche new fresh foliage in the coming weeks. I did notice, just because I've not been able to get around to it, that my hydrangeas, particularly the Incrediballs, which are the arborescence variety, or the smooth leaf hydrangeas, are starting to get buds. So really need to come out here and prune these back by a third. If you're new to hydrangeas, uh, specific hydrangeas, I would recommend you check out my uh, August hydrangea tour. That was August 2021, I believe. I described the various hydrangeas in depth, and then I think in spring 2021 and spring 2022, I did a video on pruning uh, these hydrangeas specifically. So arborescence or smooth variety, which have bigger blooms on them, like you can see here, which are the white or the green. If you have a hydrangea that's got a color like pink, are blue generally those are macrophyllas and you don't want to cut on them so much or you'll be potentially removing uh, this year's blooms from them so be sure you're pruning the correct hydrangea before you break out those snips or you could risk not getting blooms on those now let's talk a little bit about the space with the red obelisk beach so you can see behind me dad helped me move the big uh, planter, the big concrete planter that I had over here. This concrete planter was the planter that was on the other side of the garden. These little giant arborvitae, which are perfect spheres here, going to get moved elsewhere in the garden, and this container is going to get moved in the center of that window out a little bit. I've got to, of course, level the ground. There's some roots there from the spruce that was removed. Uh, so I need to bring in a little bit of gravel and compact it down, get that level and centered. And this is where I'm going to have a big uh, area where I'm going to have a lot of annuals. Then I'm going to be planting lots of things under and around that that I'll go over in a separate video that I haven't been able to shoot yet. But you can see here where I planted all of these hydrangeas uh, roughly spaced out evenly around this red obelisk beach. Now I had a viewer say, don't plant those hydrangeas that way. It's just going to look like a donut. Well, that's what I'm going for. Um, they were mentioning a more naturalistic planting, and I don't know if you've seen the whole lot of my garden, but there's nothing natural about my garden. Some people are into that. Um, natural here would be honeysuckle <laughs> and Bradford pear trees. So there's nothing a whole lot natural about my garden. I really want to create impact from entirely around this Red Obelisk Beach, if I just did it in the front, I am constantly walking around the side of the house to do gardening stuff. Uh, and if it was just facing the front, I would never see any of those beautiful things. My neighbors wouldn't get to enjoy it from the back of their porch. Uh, so I want to be able to view things from all sides. And so I design in most cases where something can be seen from the entire way around. If this was backed up against a house you certainly necessarily wouldn't design that way but this is very much a bed that I walk around it's in a little inlet or an island here and so I really want to be able to see these plants all the way around them now the I need to adjust one of these hydrangeas which I'll do in a video because this one right here I think is a little further out than the ones on the other side which I mentioned would drive me nuts so I'm probably gonna pull that one up bump it in just a little bit. Some of these were not evenly planted in their containers, so they were not centered. 
and that leads with difficulty in planting and spacing sometimes. So if you're ever at the garden center and you're planting a hedge of things, I would recommend you grab the plants that are planted in the center of the container because if you don't then you're just going to end up with issues like this that you might have to correct after planting i'm also getting hosta starting to push some growth here so this is a good time to come through and remove these um, <clears throat> and move them elsewhere i didn't want to start that process too early and get out here and do too much digging around and damages damaging these things because these can go elsewhere in the garden and create some beauty in a separate location when I don't want them necessarily here anymore, especially because this area is going to get a lot more sun because the spruces aren't here. So when I am spacing out plants, I have a ton of these uh, little landscape braces here that you can just get from the big box store. Uh, they're intended to like trellis tomatoes or pepper plants is what I use them for. And I go out and I measure with a tape measure the distance between each location. Because if I don't, in a few years when those things grow up, it's going to look really odd to me if they're not exactly even. So I think there's around six foot, uh, five and a half to six foot between each of these little dowels here or these garden supports here. And I will come through and pull this one up. First thing I do is kind of make a little round motion and then that way I can get the auger exactly where the uh, support was stuck in the ground. You can see I've done the same thing over here. This is where the concrete container was. So this is where the boxwood topiary are going to go. And then I have stakes right here where those fire chief arbor vitae are going to go. So I haven't, I don't think I've measured these out. I need to double check. I can't remember. So I'll break out the tape measure and measure these again. Then I'm just going to dig down and uh, also plant these. I may just plant these today because they there's not as much in the way and I can get this entire project done. Uh, there are some hosta uh, in this bed that will need to get moved like right here but because this had areas of ground that were kind of run over more by the machine that removed the stump, the stump grinder, uh, I have some ferns in here that I need to let grow on a little more so I know where they are. Here's one you can see pretty easily. This one also, you can see the fronds sticking up. Uh, I just need to get those moved as well, so it may take a little longer. So this one may come up today because I need to plant a plant pretty close to it. I may leave this one or I may adjust the planting in a little bit, just depending on how I'm feeling at the moment. One of the reasons I also haven't been out here and done a ton of planting is because we've had so much rain and this soil is really disgusting to dig in when we've had a lot of rain. It's just a mucky mess and everything gets dirty. And sometimes it's just not worth it to dig through mud to get things planted. And also it can cause all sorts of planting problems with compaction. So especially if you have clay soil, maybe let the area dry out a little bit uh, just to make sure you're not working any extra compaction around the roots. So I'm going to grab my tripod, put you on a tripod, and we'll get some things planted. If you're new here, I'm well aware that this may look like an absolute disaster. Uh, and this is part of things that I used to not show on my channel because I just didn't think they were pretty and no one would watch them. But this is the process of starting a bed from scratch. You add your trees, then you add your shrubs, then you add your perennials, fill with annuals and then bulbs. That's how the process works. So right now I'm dealing with winter dormant perennials that were here under this large spruce tree that I showed you the removal of in the fall. And right now we're getting in some beautiful things that will be evergreen in this space. These are Fire Chief Arborvitae, which I've shown before. These came in Monrovia containers, of course, but uh, this is a licensed shrub, I think, so it's not Monrovia specific. You can probably find these at your big box store in just a black container. Been around for a while. Really beautiful shrubs that I used to not give a chance because I thought they were weird looking, but they have really beautiful green foliage. And then in the spring, they get a little more orangey. Right now, they're a little crispy but the new fresh growth on them is orange. So they always have an orange cast to the very tip of their leaves, really beautiful. So I'm going to grab my tape measure and we are going to do some measuring again so I don't get this wrong and have to move them around again another time. 
So the first start of my process is to figure out how far from the tree I want to plant these. So I realize that these are still going to be kind of close to this tree, but they may eventually have to be moved out or removed. Arborvitae transplant okay uh, in my zone, in my property. I've done it several times and I'm going to be doing it to those little giants that I just discussed earlier. But we want to kind of get the same distance around the tree. And this particular design, it's not as necessary, but I do like some symmetry. So we're going to try and do it all the way around this way. So we'll just measure from the base is what I do. And this is roughly 54, 53 to 55 inches, about 53 and a half. And so I'll go around from the base of the entire tree. This one's a little further out at 60 inches, so exactly five foot. But that's okay. I could move it in a little bit. This bed is also not directly even around the outside. And what's going to be between these are the perennial alliums. So those are called bubble bath, I think. And uh, the dark side of the moon is still being. I'll flash the design back on the screen right quick. And then after those are planted, I think those might be arriving next week or the week after. Uh, the remainder of the space, because these are small new plants, will be taking up with all of the annuals that I took you along to stock slaggers that I ordered in the fall, uh, early winter, that will be arriving in May. So now that I've measured the distance from the tree, I'm going to measure the distance between each uh, garden support. Now, this could also vary a little bit in this design. If I was doing a hedge, I would want it to be perfectly symmetrical. Uh, typically, I like them perfectly symmetrical, so we'll see. I've already moved these around a little bit, but they may vary just a little bit, which, like I mentioned, is probably okay here. So we've got 62 inches, so roughly around 5 foot. Now, these arborvitae are supposed to grow in perfect spheres, so this is 5 foot as well. But just naturally, based on the plant, that may not happen. So five foot between every one of them, they'll get three to four foot wide. That'll leave about a foot between them eventually. So they'll take up a space that, you know, is about this big. I am not worried about spacing around the strip tubing because I mentioned in the fall, all of this is going to come up and get re-moved around or redesigned. Uh, based on where these plants are because I want to deliver water directly to the plant. I don't want to deliver it out in the middle because that just encourages weed growth and wastes water. So in this location, I'll be putting probably black tubing with emitters directly at the arborvitae. And then maybe in the center of them, I will have more evenly spaced drip emitter because I do want to provide some water for those annuals that will be going in this area. But I want to do the combination there. So in a few years, when this gets bigger, when these get bigger, and I'm not sticking as many annuals in the ground, uh, I can cut out that uh, evenly spaced drip emitter tubing, cap it where it needs to be capped, and then I'm not wasting water. So we're just going to get started. I've got my Biotone starter fertilizer, which I throw in the bottom of the hole of all the plants I plant because it does a really incredible job. I have told you I'm pretty fertilizer agnostic when it comes to brands for fertilizing in the spring or throughout the season, but I do love the Biotone starter fertilizer for the initial planting of my plants. This is the emitter tubing to the old concrete container that was here, so I need to pull it up and then just get it out of the way for now. There is a hosta here. Uh, so I'm going to plant this plant and then come through and dig this up and get it out of the way. There are also probably some really big spruce roots right here uh, because this was stump ground, but it was just in this area. So this might be a little complicated job. I need to go get some pruners because these spruce roots are very proliferous and it's making digging this hole increasingly difficult, so I'll probably get a shovel too. So the augers are generally really handy, but the spruce roots are obviously dead, so they've gotten much harder than they were, and they've been just really difficult to dig in. So don't break your wrist digging with one of these augers. Make sure you're doing it carefully uh, and know the limits of your body because you can hurt yourself. I've hurt my wrists with the augers before, um, 
but if you can cut these out i'm going to try and get the auger back in there and see if i can fluff that soil a little bit so one of the reasons i like the auger is because it fluffs a little bit of my clay soil as much as clay soil can be fluffed um, and you can see this soil actually right here looks really good that's because i've been putting tons of mulch on it over the past few years triple shredded mulch that breaks down really fine uh, and lots of other good stuff so we're going to try and use the auger again. If that doesn't work, I'm just going to resort to a shovel for this one and we'll try the auger again in other holes or maybe there's not as much spruce roots. Good. And that's all we needed. That's enough. This is a two gallon container. This auger will grind our aug holes that are up to three gallons. So this will be a little bigger than the plant needs, which is perfect. I have a tendency of leaving my uh, labels on my plants at least for part of the season until I come back through and clean all them up. So I'm gonna do that now too. Uh, that way, it's just easier to clean all that up at once instead of having stuff flying everywhere in the windy spring. Now, this hosta right here, I'm gonna wait and dig up probably this weekend. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, but it'll be pretty close to that plant. So we need to get it out of there. This one will as well. Must be a really big root here. Yeah. This is a big daddy root. So what I'm gonna do here, cause this root is dead anyway, I'm gonna bump this plant out a little bit. This is probably over an inch to two inches thick. So I don't wanna have to worry about cutting that root with my big loppers. We'll just move the auger over and see if we can finish digging here and this drip's already getting on my nerves the drip is great until you need to move stuff around and plant the sedums will have to be moved around as well uh, of course those will probably be moved elsewhere in the garden anyway Reminder, there's a fern right here, but I'm going to be digging right here and I'll come back and pull up both of these ferns later this week. See, this soil looks really beautiful because it's been amended for years, but this is one of the oldest beds in the garden that was put here when the house was built. Uh, of course, the prior owner of his home did not do much mulching or gardening. So a lot of this has just occurred in the past three or four years that I've been gardening in this garden. Now this one in the back will of course after the years get less and less light and may not grow as well or arborvitae that tend to grow in balls like this tend to splay out a little bit if they get a lot of water on them uh, because they're just not got enough sun to keep them a really tight sphere but this is one that might have to be removed in any way in the future depending on how the things around it grow so this is intended to be a space filler for now and I can move it elsewhere in the garden 
in four or five years or however long it takes for this other stuff to grow up. The roots on all these plants are really nice. They're rooted to the bottom of the container, but they're not crowded or over-rooted, so you need to prune them or pull them away from the side, loosen them up. So just put them directly in the ground as is. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. Uh, I would normally water these things in because we're not past our last frost here in Ohio, and because we have pretty wet springs, and because we got rain this week and the soil is still pretty moist, you can see it hold together here in my hand, these will be fine as they are. We'll probably get some rain in the next week. If we don't, I'll come around with a container and uh, pour a little water on them, but they'll be just fine. Thank you guys for joining me today. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone. Bye.